Okay, folks, a pretty exciting uh, bit of information here on proto-industrialization, this period of time before really major industrialization happens and kind of what leads up to these issues and what's going on. Well, first thing we have to look at is the agricultural society of Europe is going to change relatively dramatically coming out of the Middle Age period into the more modern age uh, simply due to what was considered a, uh, a little ice age where temperatures across Europe and really across the globe um, dropped dramatically well below what was normal and <clears throat> when this happened you know the agricultural society did not shift itself to kind of meet the needs or meet the demands of the change in weather patterns you know again they weren't as advanced techno technologically to do this and they found themselves kind of in a predicament where the agricultural system was not good enough to feed uh, really the new population that was growing uh, throughout Europe at this point. So, you know, ideas had to change and of course we're moving towards a much more global society. New crops are being exchanged <coughs> during the Columbian Exchange and Europe really has to keep pace to make sure they can take care of their population. Okay, so you had 17th century European uh, agrarianism and you can see, you know, the change obviously uh, using domesticated animals like they had been doing, uh, farming crops, uh, especially when we look at these crops, will be cereals, uh, wheats, crops that are hardy that can help them out uh, definitely in the long run. So when we look at the feudal system, the one they had been used to, you know, you're looking at a really a three crop rotation, uh, one field laying fallow so it can kind of regain its nutrients and then moving the crops from field to field and just kind of adjusting and adapting the crops to the different fields and growing in different fields to allow the fields to kind of uh, work with a certain crop for that season. Of course, with the Little Ice Age, you know, your fields and your climate aren't going to work as conducively as they had during the Middle Ages, and really this feudal three-field crop system is not going to work, so we're going to have to have some kind of technological advancement to get to this idea. All right, so you can see the, uh, the yield grain ratio for grain crops, or the yield ratio for grain crops uh, across Europe at this time, okay? And notice in England, as we move closer to the 19th century, they're going to have a massive yield ratio, which is going to help boost their population. Of course, add to the idea of uh, the British Empire that's going to build simply because if you think about where technology is really going to boom, that's going to happen really in Great Britain and in Germany. And industrialization is going to be a major, major advancement, hence the sharp rise for letter A here, okay? France, Italy, and Spain are going to see some industrialization, but it's going to be relatively in or inconsistent. Central Europe and Scandinavia are going to see slight gains in the same with Eastern Europe. But the biggest one, obviously, to focus on here is Great Britain and the low countries of places like Netherlands and Germany. All right, you can see where grain supplies are going to be located, uh, surplus areas, deficient areas, and the trade routes. I mean, acro across, you see this northern area here, you have lots of grain along the Black Sea. Uh, across Italy, those trade routes are going to, during the 16th century, the 1500s, are going to be very active across central, southern, and eastern Europe, uh, but not as much here in England. That's going to come much, much later down the road, okay? You can see the difference when we get to the 18th century because of industrialization. Uh, England has got major growth of their cereal crops. Uh, same thing with the northern part of Germany here, parts of France. All right, and it's going to shift away from essentially the Eastern European, Southern European areas back up to the northern European areas where population is going to boom because health is much better. They have much more food to feed their population. Okay, uh, village of small town life, just some, some different uh, pictures, small town farmers market, the idea of, of growing your grains out in the fields, bringing them into the cities to make a profit. Uh, with urbanization starting to boom, you had to have food and access for the people. And that's where the farmer's market's ideas are going to come in. All right, a village school, if you notice, you have multiple children with a few adults in there, um, different age children. But it's just, it's kind of that one room schoolhouse of the 16th century. Send their children temporarily, kind of more as a slight learning 
really a babysitting type deal and then send them out to the fields to work for the rest of the day. Um, leisure time, when they have time from not working in the fields, all right, you can see they're playing some kind of a ball game uh, where they're trying to hit the ball through the hoop, kind of like a croquet idea. Um, but definitely leisure time on Sundays when they're not in the fields and they're not farming. All right, the lace maker, we're moving closer to the idea of cottage industry and in a putting out system. Uh, someone who's good at making lace inside the home while taking care of their children as well. And you get a little equality between men and women and what they do for work. Okay, um, your supplemental income, cottage industry, put is out, putting out system. You can see here a family in their home with the loom uh, sitting very predominantly in most in the majority of their home. I mean, that was the area where the men worked. You know, the women were taking care of the children, but the idea of working within the home to kind of take care of their family and also fend for their family was rather important at this time. So here's how the putting out system kind of works. You can see the raw wool is brought to the clothier and then the different processes that are done amongst the family members or within the cottage, which will become the cottage industry, um, that cre actually finish and create the clothing and then it's sent back to the clothier who then goes ahead and sells it. So you have a multi-tiered system where we have a raw material to a finished material and it's going through the family uh, system and the putting out system that is being done within the home itself okay so here are some advantages uh, definitely peasants could supplement their agricultural income they could make money when it wasn't farming time when they couldn't go sell in the markets all right they take advantage of the winter markets obviously they have a chance to make money to keep their family uh, secure and safe uh, merchants avoided higher wages and often dependent regulations of urban labor here you know you could go to a particular family and really ask for one price or they could charge one price that the merchant knew was a decent price to pay and it didn't have to go through the issues of urban labor and a major industrialization that's going to occur with it all right um, less numbers obviously you didn't have to worry about as many people working if the economy wasn't good but of course less numbers keeps the price uh, cost down price can go up and merchants can make a lot of money um, the the advancement of banks at this time is going to be huge Banks are giving merchants capital, and of course, later, that'll move to larger industrialization complexes. But right now, you know, we're in small villages, and a merchant is going to a particular person or a particular group of people to create their goods, all right? Um, peasants are acquiring skills. Young people can start separate households earlier. The younger they are, if they can fend for themselves, they can, they can produce more children. Population growth, of course, that goes with the advancements in agriculture as well. They can feed these populations. Some disadvantages of the system, okay. Uh, when demand rose, the system was inefficient because they couldn't keep up with the, the demands of the market and they fell behind, okay. Um, it was difficult for merchants to really force demand because one person or one family couldn't keep up, which is why industrialization assembly line ideas are going to become much more profitable. Okay, um, and this is going to lead to factories. And that's going to be the issue. Is you know once the putting out system doesn't work, people are going to have to go back into the factories and and create in high demand and in high rates of speed. Okay. Um, also, when you have just a father figure included, you know, involved. He can dictate just his family. Now everyone's working under a manager, and you're going to have a rise of another class of people that's going to be moving up in the world. In Europe, you're going to have your very wealthy factory owners, your very poor peasants who are working in the factory, but you're going to have this new group of people, which will later be called the nouveau rich because they're like upper middle class people. All right. And then when we look at England, you have the advantages of water and steam power that are going to be applied to the factories. Uh, the access to rivers in England and, of course, the access to rivers in Germany are going to be huge as we move towards industrialization. All right. Uh, here in a factory system, you have apprentices learning looms uh, under the guise of a manager. All right. Population changes. You can see in the 18th century, the population density, where the population was huge. Uh, London, Paris, around the major cities, Amsterdam, where you're going to have massive industrialization. But you see in the Eastern Europe, it's not going to be the case as much, or in Spain or Southern Europe. You know, but your population booms are going to be around the cities, of course. Population growth. You have Russia has major population growth as they're moving away and they're westernizing under Peter the Great and Catherine the Great. They're going to move towards a greater population growth. You see England is going to have drastic uh, increases. Italy is going to have drastic increases, especially in their northern industrial cities. And then the stagnation of some other um, 
Eastern European countries based on the fact that there's a lack of industrialization. Uh, European urbanization, you can see the major cities in Europe at the time, places like London and Paris are going to be your major, major cities. And of course, that's where most of your industrialization is happening. You can tell where uh, the growth is happening over time is because of the advancements in industrialization. Uh, industry and population at the time, south of France, all right, you can see where, uh, south of Paris, I mean, right in this area, you can see where the booms are happening. Uh, Manchester, Birmingham, London, okay, you're having major, major booms around industrialization and, and production. Um, gin Lane, of course, the rise of alcoholism, which we'll talk about in our class a little bit later, but, you know, this was the outlet for people to go to after work, working very long, hard hours, um, and you can see it's kind of like the destruction of uh, people and their mindsets, and, and, and the family life is going to be destroyed here because of the rise of alcoholism. You can see this guy's emaciated, uh, this woman's drunk, and she's dropping her baby. I mean, there's a lot of issues that are going to come because of industrialization um, and what workers need to do as a relaxation or a kind of a break away. Beer Street, kind of the same representation, um, just not, just a different type of alcohol. And of course, these are both in England uh, because beer and gin are major, major uh, alcoholic beverages that are consumed in, those, in that country. All right, the Emancipation of Peasantry to 1812, the early 19th century. All right, you can see which peasants were fully emancipated, uh, completely freed after revolutions. All right, moving their way towards achieving freedom, moving it away, away from it. And then, of course, where you have unfree populations. Um, these countries here, France, England, the Holy Roman Empire, which will later become Germany, these places are mainly, you know, either democratic societies, republics, constitutional monarchies. They're very pro-people where you have still this idea of absolute monarchs in Russia, the same in the Austro-Hungarian Empire and the Ottoman Empire. And you think about the, kind of the tides that are turning and where we're moving towards World War I, how it's going to shift because of heavy industrialization and what's going to happen when we get to that point. All right, impediments, economic innovation, 18th century. Why was England different? These are some questions we're going to look at. Here's really why England was different. Um, they're going to make laws called enclosures, enclosed fields, the Enclosure Acts, which is going to force farmers to stay within certain boundaries. Um, by doing this, major farms can take over the land and really increase production on a factory style agriculture as opposed to the individual farmer themselves. Raw materials are huge, iron ore, coal, the access to inland rivers, the fact that nowhere in England is more than 90 miles away from, from water, that's going to really help boost, and of course the building of the railroads, that's going to really help boost uh, English industrialization, and of course the fact that they can make a lot of money, which will and then in turn lead to the British Empire. Uh, British ports are huge. Again, the access 90 miles from anywhere in England to any port or waterway gets goods from inland into the into the North Sea and into the Atlantic very, very quickly. All right. Foreign trade, of course, we're moving towards the growth of the, of the British Empire. They're starting to colonize more, take over more land, and bring in more raw materials that are going to lead to more production on the home front. And then, of course, you have this idea of a nouveau rich, this capitalist entrepreneur, someone who's taking an investment and putting into a factory and turning over a major, major profit. These people are not your old nobility, your old landowning rich. These are your new rich who are making it through entrepreneurship. And this idea is going to carry over into the United States as we move into this really true industrial period.